and welcome to Efficient Cooking Without Humor, where we do what exactly? We cook German food. In today, the first episode ever, we're gonna make Eingemachtes Kalbfleisch, which is a sort of a veal ragu. Uh, it, is, it has a rich, creamy, a little bit zesty sauce, and it is one of my childhood dishes. It is originally from the southwest part of Germany uh, called Baden-Württemberg, specifically from the Swabian area of Baden-Württemberg. And yeah, I love this dish, I grew up with it, and I think we should dive right into it. Okay, so for the ingredients for Eingemachtes Kalbfleisch. We will need some veal. Uh, this is a veal shank, but you can basically use any cut that's good for braising and a little bit more fatty, such as veal neck or maybe the upper part of the shoulder. Then we will need onions. I'm using about 500 grams of onions as well as 500 grams of carrots. I'll use one small leek, half a celeriac, which is about 500 grams as well. Then one onion, some spices. I'm using black peppercorns, juniper berries and bay leaf. Then we need ground nutmeg, some heavy cream, some butter, flour, white wine, one egg yolk, black pepper, white pepper and salt. The exact uh, measurements you will find in the description below as in grams as well as in freedom measurements for our American friends. Okay, so let's start with the first step of our preparation. We are gonna firstly peel that celeriac. Okay, now we're just gonna give our celeriac a rough chop, just like that. And next on the carrots, take off the tips and cut them, chop them roughly as well. You don't really need to peel these since you're not gonna eat them. Next, the leek. I already washed this as well, as you can see. Always make sure that you get all of this dirt out. And then we just do like this. One, two, three. The lemon. We're gonna use half of this lemon, like so. And then we're just gonna cut this into two pieces. Be careful, don't use too much lemon because if you use too much, it tends to get bitter because these white parts of the lemon are bitter. Next thing, we need to peel the onions. All right, I'll cut the onions in quarters. The meat, I'm not gonna do anything with it. You can maybe take off a little bit of that silver skin, but it's not really necessary. And as we are gonna cut the meat anyway after we cooked it, we can still take off some of the, the tougher parts if there are any left, which hopefully there are not. And then we put our spices and in the next step we basically want to fill this up with water. Yeah. Okay guys, so this is it. Uh, now all we need to do is bring it to a boil and very importantly you need to salt this. Uh, other than like a broth or a stock, you don't want to wait with salting it because you're going to cook the meat in it, which means there's got to be salt in the water to give salt and flavor into the meat, yeah? So, and we're going to be very liberal with this. I'm just doing this by feeling, but I would, I would say maybe like seven to 10 grams of salt per liter of water. Now we just want to bring it to a boil. Okay guys, so here we are. Our veal is cooked nicely, the broth looks great too. What we need to do now is we need to filter the broth and take out the meat. So first, let me take out the meat, set it down on a plate for now, and then we filter the broth. This is good so far. Uh, I'll clean this up real quick, and then I'll be right back because we gotta filter it one more time. Okay, so now we filter the broth one more time. There we go, and here is the meat. It smells amazing, the broth as well, just these rich earthy flavors, great combination. All we want to do now is let the meat cool down together with the broth so it retains its moisture and once it's cool, we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay guys, here we are, the broth and the meat has cooled down. This is what we're left with and to me this looks like about four portions, which is why I have cut it in half, because I'm only gonna cook two tonight. As you can see, the meat 
is super juicy. It has a beautiful color and you can see the collagen dissolved and it's really soft now and it's gonna just taste amazing. And I'll, I like a little bit larger chunks here. They don't actually have to be exactly the same size because they're already cooked, so no problem. And this one I'll keep and then you would just fill this up with the broth. And I'll also save some broth for our sauce. And the rest you can perfectly use as a soup, you can use it as a stock, you can you know, freeze it or just keep it in the fridge, I would say for about five to seven days. And it tastes great, so you know, don't, don't pour that away. Okay guys, here we are, let's finish up our dish. We got all the ingredients for the sauce, let's make it. Okay, we put in the butter. Go down a little bit with the heat. Wait until the butter is melted. There we go, and then we add in some flour. It's just a regular roux we're making here. I don't want to add too much because I don't want it. it it's going to be thick enough anyway. You want to cook this a little bit in the roux, but always make sure you don't burn it. You cook it because you want the, the taste of the flour go, to go away. And now we add some white wine, about so. And make sure to stir it properly so it doesn't clump. Now we add in our stock or the broth basically, step by step. You don't want to add all of it because this will just make it harder to dissolve. Let it come to a boil before we add in our rest. Next, we want to add in some cream. I go lightly on the cream. There are different recipes that only use cream as a thickening agent, um, but I like it. I like to be stingy with the cream. I just use it basically to give it a, some nicer color. And now we add in our flavorings, which is gonna be some lemon zest for a little bit of an extra freshness. Then we will add in some ground nutmeg here and of course some white pepper. Now we can turn down the heat to the lowest and give this one more stir. You want to keep an eye on the consistency. If it's a little bit too thick, you definitely want to add in a little bit of the broth. And since we are later gonna add an egg yolk as well to thicken it up and give it some extra richness, I really like to, um, I really like to put a bit more broth right now, like so. That's it, just a tiny bit to really make sure we got the right, right thickness because you don't want the sauce to be too thick either. And then, uh, yes, the broth is already salted but the other ingredients are not, so I'm gonna add a touch of salt, just a touch, be really, careful with the salt because you can definitely over salt this and of course always try keep trying your food if it tastes good perfect if not add some extra salt add some pepper whatever you like you can adjust this to your own taste and there we go I'll keep up the heat a little bit because now we are going to add in the meat and basically since the meat's already cooked we don't want to cook the meat here we just want to want to um, Come, let the meat come to, to the temperature and then we are ready to serve basically. Okay guys, here the meat has come up to temperature, it's nice and hot and now for the last step of this dish. Uh, first things first, we're gonna turn off the heat. That is very important, you wanna turn off the heat, make sure there is no more heat coming. Then secondly, what you wanna do is you wanna take your egg yolk Again, use your whisk, keep whisking and put the egg yolk in. And then you gotta be fast, 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 fast. And then see, it's already dissolved because you don't want it to, to curdle up. It's dissolved now, so we're all good. Now we just stir it in. You can see it changed the color a tiny bit, gave it some extra richness and the yolk is really that, that little bit. You know, that extra little bit that will lift this dish over the top. There we go, beautiful. All right, it's time to plate. Okay guys, here we are. Um, let's plate this first, then I'll talk about the sides. 
I'm gonna grab a couple of nice chunks here. There we go. And we add some of that beautiful sauce on top. As you can see, a little bit mistakey on the side, but not a big deal. Just clean up after yourself. And then for the finishing touch, we add some fresh chives. They will give this dish a little bit of the extra zing. You can definitely add parsley, but I, which is probably a bit more traditional, but for me, it is just perfect with chives. As you can see, here is our eingemachtes Kalbfleisch. I like to serve it with the Spätzle, which is a regional uh, noodle dish, egg noodle dish from uh, Swabia, Baden-Württemberg, as well as some butter lettuce with a lemon dressing. It just combines so well. If you can't find Spätzle, you can basically use any type of noodle. You can also do some potatoes. Um, I would recommend for regular boiled potato or even fried potato, probably you don't want to do it with mashed potato because it will be just too much cream, too much richness and not enough texture, I would say. Let's give this a taste test. Okay guys, here we are. This is our eingemachtes Kalbfleisch. I will show it to you guys one more time. And now it's time for me to dive in. It looks amazing. As I said in the beginning, it's one of my childhood dishes, one of my favorites. So let me have a bite. Mm. This is just amazing. Firstly, the meat is so, so tender and juicy because of the way we cooked it. And it has this, this amazing veal taste. This is, it, it combines so well with the creamy sauce that is rich, but not over, overburdening it. It is, has a little bit of that zing from the lemon zest in there. And it's just a, a gorgeous dish. Let me have one more bite. It's really amazing. Mm. Wow. So please tr give this a try. Try to cook this at home. It's super easy to prepare. Yes, the last bit of making the sauce is a little bit stressful, but I think if you just prepare properly, you can get through it in no time. It is an amazing dish. It's definitely a showstopper that you can serve for guests or on a Sunday, whenever you want, basically. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please give me some feedback, leave a comment, like, dislike, whatever you want, as well as please subscribe if you want to. It would mean the world to me. Thank you so much for watching and I catch you next time. Bye bye and tschüss.